Let's start off with what's going on between US and China at the moment. It seems sabre-rattling off the message of this US congratulations. Talk us through what's happening there. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, so surprisingly enough, Beijing hasn't really give uh, much of a say about the electoral result last night. So then, of course, the United States, actually before the election result was announced, already uh, sent a forward gesture saying that they're going to send a high-level envoy to China, and Beijing was quite upset with that uh, before the election result was published. And indeed, today it's confirmed that the envoy is coming, and uh, Beijing has not yet made um, a very high-level statement just yet, but it is expected that perhaps right before the inauguration day is on May 20th, uh, Beijing is going to have a much more active reaction towards the election results. It's interesting. I'm reading a, a comment here for, that's coming from uh, Chinese state media saying the remarks, quote, violated uh, Taiwan's uh, US promise that it only would maintain cultural, economic and other non-official ties with Taiwan. We know from Anthony Blinken's message, he apparently emphasised the partnership between Taipei and Washington uh, was rooted, quote, in democratic value. So that's what we have. You mentioned something key to that. This is this visit, which tends to happen, doesn't it, after an election by former senior figures in the U.S. government. Tell us what's happening there. So, indeed, uh, the high-level envoy is something that uh, was uh, set by Washington uh, before the election day. Uh, it is quite a surprise statement. I Perhaps for everyone, there are happier party and that there are also party that worry about this because, of course, we recall what happened uh, during Nancy Pelosi's visit, who was the um, previous high-level official who uh, visited Taiwan, and her visit uh, certainly caused um, high-level turbulence uh, in the straight A relations. Um, so if the envoy indeed uh, is going to visit Taiwan and make an uh, official statement that is out of Beijing's expectations, uh, it is certainly going to cause quite some disruptive statement from Beijing. Give us a sense what's going on on the ground, you know, how this victory is being uh, reported in the press there, the atmosphere um, where you are in Taipei. Uh, yes, I am in Taipei and, uh, well, some call it a victory, some wouldn't. Uh, even for uh, William Lai's supporters, uh, we're well aware that uh, he has earned only 40% of this total support uh, from the voters, and this is only uh, this is one of the lowest since uh, uh, 2000. Um, the previous one was around 39%, and he earned uh, 40%. Uh, even though it was a victory to his party, we could say. Um, however, there are also people who says that he basically did not win the heart of 60% of the voters in Taiwan. So, would somebody call that always a victory? And some might not be. Uh, and as of uh, relationship between Taiwan and the United States, actually, the chairwoman of uh, uh, America Institute in Taiwan has already made several repeated statements saying that no matter who was elected, the um, attitude from the United States to Taiwan would not change. Just like Joe Biden uh, on the 14th already had a hasty uh, response saying that he does not support independence yeah. before yes. he went on vacation. Ya Chung Wan, good to talk to you, a journalist in Taipei. Thank you.